Welcome to Nature's Nuggets. Today we will see some of the weirdest and most astonishing creatures ever. Don't miss this wild adventure. Let's go. Australia has an unusual master of survival, who is armed with long needle-like claws and a huge tongue, Echidna. And she is the real storm of the ants. This animal devours them in industrial scale. It would seem that due to her needles, the animal is invulnerable. But in these places, fires often occur. What does the poor little beast do then? She is quite small and it is hard for her to run away from the approaching flames, but she knows what to do in such situations. She buries herself in the ground, covering all her body with soil. All insects, beasts, scatter, who knows where. And huge territories burn out, the earth remains devastated. What happened to our vicious anteater? But actually, she can lower her body temperature to survive the fire passing over her. She is a real master of survival in the ashes. But this is all nonsense, now you will see something phenomenal. In Southeast Asia, there are dozens of volcanoes that for millions of years have forced the local animals to adapt to them. Melanesian megapodes. They lead an extremely unusual lifestyle for wildlife. Every day, dozens of adult birds gather together near the volcano, as if seized by some kind of madness. It's a deadly place. Everywhere there is volcanic ash and toxic gas. But Melanesian megapodes have adapted to such conditions. They have learned to take advantage of these destructive processes. You see, in order for the birds to have offspring, they need to incubate eggs. This is a very tedious occupation. They have to incubate them so that the egg temperature is high enough. They shouldn't freeze. But the Melanesian megapodes came up with an ingenious way to avoid hatching eggs at all. Now, guess why they need volcanoes right near the surface? The temperature of the volcano is 1,000 degrees Celsius, but there are many places with perfect egg temperature, and megapodes are capable of feeling the heat subtly. They can discern temperature difference of half a degree Celsius. Around the volcano, there are only a few places where the temperature is exactly what they need, 33 degrees. For these places, there is a bird fight. In the warm ash of the volcano, the bird digs a hole and lays an egg in it then covers it up and that's it. From now on, the mother is free as a bird, literally and figuratively. She won't care about the egg anymore. The chick will hatch itself thanks to the heat emanating from the volcano and will be able to take care of itself. Before us is a real volcanic bird, a living fantasy in the real world. Incredible. We return to Australia, where on its lands there is one very interesting predator that preys exclusively on other reptiles. Many of them are scared and try to escape as soon as possible, but not the golden-tailed gecko. When I was talking about an interesting predator in these places, I had in mind him. With his miniature size and camouflage, he is almost nothing afraid of except for the sun. He needs a shade, he needs at least a narrow slit, and he can go there with ease. But the stripedly Ollies is able to notice the slightest movement, and the snake sees the gecko. She climbs the grass to have a better position to attack the prey. But the prey here is anyone but this gecko. When he sees in front of him a dubious creature like this snake, he starts to use his secret weapon from his tail. He sprays jets of chemical substance directly from his tail. It is actually a liquid that is not dangerous, but it is so sticky and so smelly that it scares off anyone, even the most bloodthirsty hunter, having met with the gecko, retreats to a safer place. A delicate tower of 8 meters height, with a complex ventilation and cooling mechanism is the amazing work of the termites. But there are animals that have learned to use these qualities of termite houses for their own purposes. This is the golden-shouldered parrot, one of the smartest birds in the Australian steppes. Here, the conditions are extreme. It's hot and now it's also the dry season. That's why the parrots make a nest right in the termite mound, where there is always a comfortable temperature and humidity. Ingenious. The chicks are soon ready to fly out of the nest, but there's danger in the air. Another step fire. The dried grass can ignite very easily. Many plants here also contain combustible oils that intensify the fire that destroys everything in its path. The parents flee while there is a chance, but the chicks can't fly away. They haven't learned to fly in time. 
Now it's too late. There's no way out. The flames engulf everything. Australia suffers from fires more than any other country. They sometimes claim over a billion animal lives per year. But these smart parrots have thought of everything. Termite mounds are flame retardant and easily withstand local fires. Nothing happens to the chicks inside. Termites have developed an excellent survival strategy. For the open spaces, they build real fortresses. It takes about five years of labor of several generations to make a termite mound grow to full size. But termite mounds provide such a good protection that, for example, in the open Brazilian savanna where fires also happen often, termites are the most numerous species among the animal world. Let's start with one of the most incredible animals in the world, is the dune shark, also known as the golden mole. It is a predator that moves underground, literally floating in the desert sands of Namibia. It hunts for its prey by sensing the slightest vibrations in the sand, just like the fictional creatures from the movies Tremors or Dune, however. Unlike those monstrous beasts, the dune shark only preys on insects such as termites and beetles. It can catch up to 60 bugs per night, which provide it with water and food. The golden mole has a strange appearance, as well as a strange lifestyle. It is covered with skin and fur that protect its eyes, making it completely blind. But it has special bones in its ears that allow it to detect the movements of its prey and predators. The ability to move in the sand also helps the golden mole to hide from danger and survive in the harsh environment of the desert. At night, in the darkness of the coral sea, mysterious creatures appear. They are real fish lanterns, with a glow that comes from bacteria that fill special organs under their eyes. The glands of these lantern fish activate the glow of these bacteria for different purposes. For example, to illuminate the seabed, looking for food, Using such a handy tool like a lantern, they can easily outcompete all others who are also searching for some living creature at the bottom of the sea. And also, these flashlights are used to confuse predators. The lights in the dark make it hard to choose a specific target. But what if a predator still gets close enough? Then the fish just turns off its lantern and instantly becomes invisible, a perfect survival. Strategy in the dark. Night falls in the Sonoran Desert. At this time, here a dangerous world is awakening to life. An experienced killer, the Desert Hairy Scorpion, is one of the largest species of scorpions in America. Nearby, there comes out a new generation of tarantulas. Under the supervision of their mother, the scorpion is clearly interested in them. But what will happen next, you'll never guess. The spider just passes over the scorpion and walks away leaving her children to be eaten by this spider lover. It turns out that the mother of this species of tarantula can eat her children, as well as them now eats this scorpion. That is, spiders have no one to protect them on their own. The scorpion won't stop there. He finds a hole of a rodent, a cute animal but cute only on the outside. He immediately attacks the scorpion. But what does our scorpion have for this mouse? It has a sting with deadly venom and it immediately injects it into the body, poor rodent, in the head and injecting a bunch of toxins into it. It would seem that the mouse is doomed to a painful death. That's just, you see, this rodent is called the scorpion mouse. Guess why it's so named? In the first place, because it has full immunity to scorpions. And secondly, because it loves to devour these very scorpions. So, without thinking twice, the mouse attacks again. This scorpion has no the slightest chance of surviving. She likes mouse meat and with it comes from a more toxic than dessert scorpion, but for the scorpion mouse, this is all an empty sound she wants to eat. And once the centipede appeared in front of her, who kills mice, the mouse will eat it. The centipede desperately tries to resist, inflicts many powerful blows, injects so much poison into the rodent. How much can she? Well, the scorpion mouse has full immunity and doesn't care how much you suffer. Meeting with her means death, no matter how poisonous you are. The centipede will be eaten without remainder. But wait, you obviously haven't underestimated this little devil. In addition to the centipede, she also begins to devour the killed kangaroo rat. It seems everything is too little for her. After her meal, the scorpion mouse starts howling like she's some kind of wolf. 
although the wolves are far from her bloodthirstiness, of course. This sound carries for several hectares, warning everyone that this is her hunting grounds and better not to approach this always. Hungry Monster, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and put likes. Your support means a lot to me and helps me create more content for you. See you in the next video.